Hello friends. Welcome to my new Java Enterprise Programming Tutorial Series video. Today, I will teach you, how to send messages to a message queue using Java Message Service API. Friends. The Java Message Service API, provides a mechanism for Java EE applications to send messages to each other. JMS applications do not communicate directly. Message producers send messages to a destination, and message consumers receive that message from the destination. The destination is a queue, if message communication is point to point between producer and consumer. In my previous tutorial, I discussed how to create and set up JMS Connection Factory and JMS Queue. I will be using these connection factories and queue in subsequent videos. The link to my previous video is provided in description below. Friends In order to send messages to JMS queue, let's create an enterprise application client in NetBeans IDE. Go to File menu, and select New Project. New Project dialog box gets open. In the Categories list, select Java EE and, select Enterprise Application Client in the Projects list. Click Next. New Enterprise Application Client dialog box gets open. Enter the name of the project as, My JMS Client. Click Next. Server and Settings section, of the new Enterprise Application Client dialog box gets open. We will select Glassfish Server as the server. Choose Java EE 7 as Java EE version. Provide fully qualified main class name as com. Hubberspot. Sender. Message sender. Here, Message Sender is the name of class to demonstrate sending of messages to queue. Click Finish. In Projects tab, my JMS client application gets created. Open it. It has a main class by name, Message Sender, under com. Hubberspot. Sender package. Friends. In my previous tutorials, I created a JMS connection factory and a JMS queue. I will be using these JMS resources in order to send text messages to queue. Let's create a static variable of type connection factory. Connection Factory's instances are managed by application servers. We can look up for these instances through their JNDI name. Using at the rate resource annotation, we can do a dependency injection. At the rate resource annotation has an element by name, map name. We provide JNDI name of resource to it. In my previous tutorial, I have created a connection factory by JNDI name as JMS slash my connection factory. Let's use this JNDI name to inject JMS connection factory resource to our Java class. Let's move ahead and create static variable to hold JMS queue instance. Using at the rate resource annotation, we can inject dependency for Q. In my previous tutorial, I have created a Q by JNDI name as JMS slash my Q. Let's use this JNDI name to inject JMS Q resource to our Java class.
In the main method, let's create and send text messages to queue. In order to create a connection and session to a queue, we have to create a JMS context. Connection Factory instance helps in creating a JMS context. JMS context wraps connection and session to a JMS queue. Using create context method of connection factory, we create an instance of JMS context and assign it to JMS context reference variable. JMS context helps us in creating JMS message producer and JMS message consumer. In this tutorial, we will create and send message to queue, therefore we have to create an instance of JMS producer. Using create producer method of JMS context, we create an instance of JMS producer and assign it to JMS producer reference variable. After creating JMS producer, let's create a message that we wish to send to Q. Here, I create a string hello JMS, which will be sent to Q. Let's print sending message to JMS on the console. JMS producer instance has a method by name, send. This method is responsible for sending message to Q. It normally takes in a two parameters. One is instance of destination to which message has to be sent. And other, the actual message to be sent. In our case, destination is the queue which we created in previous tutorial. This queue is already injected above, through at the rate resource annotation. And actual message is the string message, we created above as, hello JMS. After passing both parameters, JMS producer comes to know that where and what message is to be sent. Finally, printing, message sent successfully on the Java console. Let's move ahead and run this message sender class. It builds and distributes my JMS client.jar to Glassfish server. You can see on the Java console. It outputs sending message to JMS and after sending message to JMS queue it prints message send successfully so friends using JMS API we were able to send hello JMS message successfully to queue in my next tutorial I will demonstrate how to retrieve hello message from queue through JMS consumer so friends Go through this video two to three times so that, how to send messages to a message queue, using Java Message Service API, concept gets more clear to you. Hope you like this video. Please give one minute to like, share, comment or subscribe my channel, or you can visit my website at www.hubberspot.com.